Today we're going to demonstrate how to adjust or replace the timing belt of a Testmaster testing screen. The Gilson Testmaster testing screen delivers accurate particle size separations on large samples and the internal rotating counterweights of the Testmaster drive system equalizes the vertical screening action for a smooth operation. Here are the steps to adjust or replace the timing belt of a Testmaster. First, unplug the unit from the power source and then unplug the power cord from the unit. Now, move the Testmaster away from walls to allow sufficient room for working. Next, open the doors, remove any screen trays or pans, and set them aside. Now we are ready to remove the top panel, the right panel, the left panel, and the rear panel in that order. Removing all the panels of the Testmaster may not be necessary to gain access to the timing belt. For this demonstration, all panels will be removed. To remove the top panel with the hopper assembly attached, remove the four screws at the corner of the top panel. Lift the top panel and hopper off the unit and then carefully set aside. To remove the right side panel, you first need to disconnect the timer. The timer connection is fastened to the front of the drive case which is located under the protective drive case cover. The drive case cover protects many of the mechanisms of the unit from excessive exposure to materials being tested. To remove the drive case cover, from the front of the unit reach under the drive case cover and at its rear center locate the mounting screw. Remove the screw, slide the protective drive case cover towards you, lift off, and set aside. Now the connection between the timer and the unit is more easily reachable. Cut the wire tie holding the timer connection to the drive case. Remove the electrical tape around the connection. The electrical tape protects the connection from excess exposure to materials being tested. Now that the electrical tape is removed, the connection plug is visible. Unplug the timer from the unit. Please note that the green sections of the connection plug into each other. Remove the mounting screws from the right side panel. Pull the panel off the machine and carefully set it aside. Next, remove the left side panel and set it aside. Now, remove the rear panel and set it aside. The components of the Testmaster are now accessible for inspection, adjustment, or replacement as necessary. Now, check the timing belt. A worn or loose timing belt may slip teeth on the pulleys and cause the counterweights on the drive shaft and the counterweight shaft to become out of alignment. The timing belt tension should be tight. If you find the timing belt loose and the belt appears to be in good operational order, tighten the belt by first loosening the two bolts on the tensioning bracket and then turning the adjusting bolt. To reseat or replace the timing belt, loosen the bolts at the tensioning bracket. This allows the tensioning bracket to pivot towards the front of the machine, thereby loosening the tension on the timing belt. Remove the bolt that secure the tensioning pulley to the tensioning bracket. Now remove the tensioning pulley. Next, remove the timing belt. Inspect the timing belt for damage and obtain a replacement if necessary. Take this opportunity to check the condition of the tensioning pulley and its bearings. If it does not spin smoothly, the bearings will need to be replaced. Before placing the timing belt on the timing pulleys and tension pulley, the counterweights on the drive shaft and the counterweight shaft must be positioned flat side facing up. Rotate the drive shaft by hand 
finding a mark that indicates the thick part of the eccentric. Turn the shaft until this mark is at the top of the shaft. Rotate the counterweight shaft until all the counterweights are flat side facing up and parallel to each other. It is important to maintain all counterweights in a parallel flat side facing up alignment while placing the timing belt on the pulleys. Now fit the belt around the front timing pulley and over the top of the middle timing pulley, taking care not to change the rotation of the shafts and the counterweights. Next, insert the tensioning pulley into the loop of the belt. Now, hold the belt and pulley together and bolt the tensioning pulley to the tensioning bracket. Turn the adjusting bolt for the proper belt tension, then tighten the tensioning bracket bolts. The timing belt tension should be tight. Check that all counterweights are flat side facing up and parallel to each other. If the counterweights are not in the correct position, the unit will not operate properly. Now that you have replaced the timing belt, be sure to inspect the drive belt, the hydraulic pump, the pump pedal, and all other mechanisms for wear. Once your inspections and adjustments are completed, it's time to reassemble the unit. We will reattach the exterior panels, reconnect the timer, then level the test master, and then plug in the power cord. Now attach the rear panel, and note the companion screw holes from the left panel to the rear panel. Do not over tighten the screws. Now attach the right panel. You may need to move the panel around to line up companion screw holes from the right panel to the rear panel. Attach the left panel. You may need to move the panel around to line up companion screw holes. Now tighten the screws of the right, left, and rear panels. Next, reattach the top panel with its attached hopper assembly. Now the connection between the timer and the unit should be reassembled. Ready a wire tie. Plug the timer into the unit. Note the green sections of the connection plug into each other. Completely wrap the connection with electrical tape. The electrical tape protects the connection from excess exposure to materials being tested. Secure the connection with a wire tie. Now we are going to reattach the protective drive case cover. Slide the drive case cover in position and screw it into the unit. The screw hole is located under the drive case cover, centered and towards the back. For proper operation of the test master testing screen, it is important that the unit be leveled in the location of operation. The test master rests on three leveling feet one at each front corner and one at the center back. Place a screen tray into the second slot from the top position. Leave this tray extended about four inches from the front of the machine. No other screen trays or pans should be in the unit. Pump the foot pedal until the screen tray is firmly clamped into the unit. Place a level across the extended tray resting it on the tray's flanges. Adjust the three leveling feet until the test master is level both side to side and front to back. Whenever possible, adjust by lowering the highest foot so that the test master stays as close to the floor as possible. When you have leveled the test master in both directions, tighten the locking nuts on all three feet. Release the clamping pressure so that the tray separator is fully extended. Push the screen tray into the screen tray separator assembly and return the power cord to the unit. Now, run the test master to confirm proper operation. The test master testing screen is now ready for operation. 
For any questions concerning the Gilson Testmaster testing screen or for any other Gilson product, please contact the Gilson Technical Support Team.